and peace to you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is the online worship service for the third Sunday in Advent, which is the theme of joy uh, for Wheat Ridge Presbyterian Church. My name is Laura Sugg and I serve as pastor here. So grace and peace to you. I'm here with the door propped open because we will return to the sanctuary in due time. Uh, we gather in the meantime in virtual spaces and in very small groups uh, as needed. And I give thanks for the technology that makes it possible for us to worship together at 10 o'clock on a Sunday morning or later in the week. Uh, you will have seen the announcement slide, so I invite you to take note of those things. I will just highlight again, if you are on Facebook, watching this on Facebook and you have a Facebook account, please comment and say good morning friends or good evening if you're watching it in the evening. We always love to see that as well as a reminder that this year's Christmas Eve service will be online and it will be posted at 3.30 in the afternoon on the 24th, but then you will be able to watch it as you are able to watch any videos of our worship time uh, at any time on Christmas Eve or on Christmas Day, whatever works for you. There is even talk of maybe some watch parties going on, uh, but we will give you more details about that. As the year ends, I know sometimes people have extra uh, financial uh, means to give, and we give thanks for all the ways in which your donations support the ministry. If you're able to do some extra end of year giving, that would also be very welcome. Let us, um, the call to worship today is not responsive, so let me lead us and be called to worship. Once upon a time, there was a little girl who had a terrible day. She left her lunch at home. She skinned her knee on the playground and no one wanted to sit with her on the bus. As she sank into her mother's arms at the end of the day, her mother said, honey, what was the best part of today? The little girl cried and said, nothing. The entire day was terrible. So the mother got down on one knee, wiped away her tears and said, there is always some good. Sometimes we just really have to look for it. The little girl looked up at her mom and said, what is good about today? And the mother said, for starters, you're here in my arms. Friends, anytime we gather, either in person or in spirit to worship God, we recall that we are in God's arms. May we recognize that gift. And in doing so, may we sow joy. Let us worship holy God. Amen. I dream of holiday parties in the kitchen. I dream of laughter that is contagious. I dream of birthday candles and another beautiful year. I dream of family game nights and dinner parties with friends. I dream of homemade Halloween costumes and homemade family recipes. I dream of camping, fireflies, and front porch swings. I dream of every little thing that brings joy, and I know it comes from God. So today, we light the candle of joy as a reminder that God's dream for this world involves the end of all tears. God's dream for this world involves a joy that overflows and is contagious. So may this fire burn bright, and as it does, May we sing. May we dance. May we laugh. May we hold on to the people we love. May we sow joy in a hurting world. And may it be an act of holy resistance. Amen. Amen. Let us join in the prayer for renewal, which you will see on the screen. O oh, great writer, with a sky full of stars and a world full of flowers, there should be no end to my joy. And yet, 
instead of decorating my very being with joy. I let it slip away like loose change. Instead of singing like Mary or dancing like David, I pass by remarkable beauty and love most days, unfazed. Forgive me. Teach me the ways of children who laugh and dance and sing as if joy is the very thing that keeps them alive. Maybe they have joy figured out. Gratefully, we pray. Amen. Friends, God's love is everlasting. God's mercy is boundless. The new life we have in Christ enables us to sow joy. Thanks be to God. Amen. And now we have the joy of singing uh, what I think is a very familiar uh, Christmas or Advent carol. It's verses 1 and 2 of Let All Mortal Flesh Keep Silence. And again, those lyrics will be on the screen. Let us sing before God. As you see, Mary has joined the nativity scene, and of course, a few more characters will join next Sunday and then Christmas Eve, baby Jesus. As we prepare to hear and read scripture together, let us join in the prayer for illumination, the words of which will appear on the screen. Let us pray. <clears throat> Creator God, scripture is flooded with dreamlike images. The lion lying down with the lamb, justice rolling like a mighty river, swords being beaten into plowshares, the prisoner being set free, good news to the oppressed, the whole world rejoicing. To our human ears, there are times when these words can sound like nothing more than a far-off dream, downplaying prophecy to fantasy. However, what we know is that to dream is to hope, and to hope is to imagine, and to imagine is to wonder, and to wonder is to believe. And to believe is to live and breathe for your promised day. So give us the strength to listen as we dream, O God. For deep down, we know your words 
are the very thing we need. Amen. Our first reading is Psalm 126. It's only six verses long, so we will hear and read all six verses. <clears throat> when the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dream. Then our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongue with shouts of joy. Then it was said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us and we rejoiced. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the water courses in the Negev. May those who sow in tears reap with shouts of joy. Those who go out weeping bearing the seed for sowing, shall come home with shouts of joy, carrying their sheaves. Thanks be to God. And our gospel reading is taken from the gospel according to Luke, verses 46 to 55. You may, uh, it may be very familiar to you. It is Mary's song, often called the Magnificat, which is the first word in Latin. And Mary said, my soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God, my savior, for he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on, all generations will call me blessed for the mighty one has done great things for me and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his descendants forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. And now our director of Christian education, Linda Vallow, will have a time with all ages. Hello and welcome to Time with All Ages. I don't know about you, but I love to sing, especially this time of year. I have my favorites, and I'm sure you have some favorites as well. In our story today from Luke chapter 1, verses 46 through 55, we learn that Mary was told that she would give birth to Jesus. She was filled with joy because she was doing something special for God. Even though Mary was a poor girl and not a well-known person, God did not say she's just a young, unimportant girl. God took Mary seriously and trusted her and not someone rich, famous, or important to be the mother of Jesus. Because she, of the joy she felt that God chose her, a poor unknown girl, to have this baby, she wrote a song. Mary's song is sometimes called the Magnificent. That's a kind of funny word, isn't it? But it means to praise or give thanks. The song begins with Mary praising God, and even though she feels like she's unimportant, she knows that God cares for her. The words after are basically saying that God wants people not to do anything that is hurtful to others, and that God wants the hungry to be filled up, the weak to be strength, strengthened, and those who are hurt to know God's mercy and healing. Sounds like a pretty good song, doesn't it? But here's the thing, God can't make the song come true all alone. We have to choose to join in with that, with what God wants for us, to sing along with God and to share that song with others. Let's pray. God, we pray for those who are feeling forgotten or unimportant. We pray for those who are poor and hungry, and we pray for people who are friendless, ignored, and pushed aside. 
We know that you care about each of these people. Be with us and help us show them that we also care. Amen. Bye for now. I'll see you next time. So um, any parent of a teenager might hear this passage from Luke with slightly different ears than those folks who are not parenting a teenager or who are not teenagers themselves. Mary, of course, was a teenager when she speaks these beautiful words, when she sings Mary's song. And that's easy to lose sight of. We uh, can imagine her as, a, as an adult, uh, a mature adult, and, uh, but that's really biblically not what seems to be happening. So later today, I'm very excited, uh, on Sunday the 13th, later in the afternoon, we are going to have a confirmation uh, service, brief service of confirmation for several of our teenagers from our congregation. And I'm so excited for that to happen. And then you will be able to see that incorporated into the worship service on uh, December 20th. So I'm excited about that. And it's also particularly relevant for the readings this week um, as we think about Mary as a teenager. Teenhood, as you may remember, or if you are a teen right now, my uh, empathy goes out to you. It's a roller coaster that many of us who are already adults are quite happy to have behind us, don't want to go back there. Uh, we can sometimes put on rose-colored glasses and remember only the highlights, only the good things. But the lows were often deep as life as our own person is uh, trying desperately to come into focus as a teenager. And this was probably true for Mary, although obviously uh, things like marriage and children happened a lot earlier in uh, 2000 years ago. So today is special. It's a special Sunday in Advent, which is itself a special season in the church year. And it's one that I didn't really recognize much until maybe 10, 15 years ago. Uh, Presbyterians for a long, long time were not very liturgically minded during the Reformation. They threw out some of the uh, things like liturgical colors and things like that. But slowly over time, especially over the past 30, 40 years, the liturgical seasons and celebrations that are so rich in a heritage from pre-Reformation Christians, especially in the West, but they are, there are also traditions in the East. So we don't use Latin much because it's not the language of our worship, but of course it was and in some ways is. Uh, for certain streams of Christianity. So you probably know this, especially if you love classical music, Magnificat is the word we use to describe some of these beautiful pieces of music that are settings of Luke's uh, reading, Mary's song that we read today. And in fact, at times, if we were worshiping together, I might have asked a teenage girl to read it because it is special to hear that from a teenager's voice. Uh, so anyway, the Latin is not something we necessarily know a whole lot about, or it's not, not hugely important. But if you hear that word magnificat, you mean, you know that it means magnify, which is part of, um, what Mary says in that first verse, uh, that we read today, uh, Luke chapter one, verses 46, 45 through, uh, 55 or so, um, and today is also, there's a special word, which I had to remind myself how to pronounce. It's gaudete, which gaudete, the Latin word, means um, rejoice. So magnificat, magnify, gaudete, rejoice. And we use a pink candle in the, if we have different colors of candles, there are three purple and one pink today for Mary. And so I, I found a pink candle to put here in remembrance of that since I'm uh, recording this from my home. So my soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. This beautiful song of Mary, uh, which probably echoes one from the Old Testament as well, uh, has been set to music, as I said, and it's beautiful. 
But there's also a seed, uh, forgive the pun, as we talk about sowing uh, today as well. Um, there's a seed of uh, a little bit of revolution there uh, with promises that God will stick up and show up for the oppressed and the downtrodden. And this is great news for them. Uh, it's not necessarily good news for those of us who are privileged. We may not consider ourselves rich by any stretch, but compared to much of the world, we probably are rich. So um, it may not be good news in the sense of our individual comfort, but it, of course it is great news, good news, uh, as we are citizens of the world and we all long for a place and a time when God's justice is present and God's love is lived out every single day for every single person. So uh, as is often the case in the Bible, Mary's song is like other passages which uh, the eyes with which we read the scripture shape what we absorb and what we glean. Uh, this beautiful song is a double-edged sword. It uh, brings hope to people at the edge. And if we have ears to hear, it calls those of us on the thrones of power. They don't have to be real thrones. They can be metaphorical thrones, of course, to remember that God's love is for the lowly. So the book of Psalms also contains many different kinds of prayers. They're so honest, sometimes they're hard to read in their uh, kind of deep honesty with God in prayer. The one for today both kind of precedes, of course precedes chronologically, uh, Mary's song about God as the mighty one, but it also echoes that same, they're a good pairing and that's why they're read often together on this day. It's about God as the mighty one doing great things for Mary. And then also in Psalm 126, it's both a plea for God's restoration and a rejoicing over the great deeds that God has done in the past. So verse one reads, when the Lord's restored the, for, the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dream. And that phrase, those who dream, is probably familiar to any of you who have been looking at the artwork and reading uh, the sermon titles during this Advent season. That is the theme for Advent for us and into Christmas and Epiphany. Those who dream. And today we're particularly looking at uh, those who dream so joy. That's S-O-W. So uh, that also comes from Psalm 126. So that's a particular reason why uh, this is not a Psalm I had really uh, ingrained in me the way so many other Psalms are part of my being and my life of faith. But uh, verse five says, may those who sow in tears reap with shouts of joy. And verse six, those who go out weeping bearing the seed for sowing shall come home with shouts of joy carrying their sheaves so it's this beautiful image of yes grief uh, the pain of this life that the people of israel are enduring but also um, remembering the times that god has been so faithful and asking for that same faithfulness and the fact that those who go out weeping taking those seeds with them to sow in the ground, shall come home with a harvest, with shouts of joy, carrying their sheaves. So memory and hope are tied together all over in scripture and especially in the Psalms. And that's true here. So Psalm 126 verse three, the Lord has done great things for us and we rejoiced. So it's again, reiterating, Boy, God, you have done great things for us. Even the nations, meaning other countries, knew that. They saw it and they said, hey, wow, you must be uh, on God's good side. So this is also true for Mary. She ends the Magnificat, as we call it, uh, in verses 40, uh, 54 and 55, saying this. He, God, has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham 
and to his descendants forever. And in other words, this is remembering the promise that God made to Abraham that began the children of Israel's journey uh, with God as the chosen people who would also be a blessing to the whole world. So memory and hope are tied together in scripture, uh, both in Psalm 126 and in uh, Mary's Magnificat, but they're also can be tied together for us as individuals and as a congregation. If you um, can think of a time that was very challenging in your own life, uh, maybe it was a really low low, but something that was a really difficult time that you went through. With hindsight, which is just another name for memory, can you see now, perhaps with the passage of a lot of time or just a few months, can you see how God saw you through that time into a time that was filled with more hope, more uh, mercy and love, and yes, the hope of joy. If you've been with this congregation or another congregation, think of some tough times you faced together as a congregation. In remembering how God saw you, the congregation, through that time, are there renewed glimmers of hope for you, those seeds of joy that might, even weeping, be sowed in the ground and bring a harvest of joy. So that those who dream so joy can collapse into, and I don't want it to, cheer up, things will get better. It can become that kind of a command that does more harm than good, especially if someone is in pain. But remember, the people in Psalm 126 really did experience challenges, difficulties, hardship, pain. They went out weeping to sow their seeds, but with help from a loving God, they held fast to the hope that they would return, shouting for joy, their arms full, full of sheaves of grain. Even privileged people who are feeling some pain uh, are an anxiety at this point. And especially, of course, people that society likes to push aside uh, along with people, uh, people without homes or threat of being unhoused, people with not much money, people with not enough food. Uh, they are feeling the pain of this particular time the keenest, I'm sure. Mary's song is good news that God's justice will come. Has the fullness of God's justice come in these 2,000 years? Not yet. Not the fullness of God's justice. Have we made steps towards a more loving and just world? Yes, absolutely. Can we sow seeds of joy even if we are weeping? relying on that promise that it will find an advent here? Absolutely. So if you are finding it difficult to magnify the Lord and rejoice in God your Savior right now, just try to find a tiny seed, that little glimmer of something good as we talked about in the call to worship, that even if you are weeping, you too can plant and reap a joyful harvest together, not by yourself, together. And you too will shout for joy when you bring in the sheaves. Let it be so.
As we come before God in prayer, I highlight a a couple of prayer concerns, uh, some of which you've heard about already. Shirley H., uh, we don't use last names on the video just for privacy reasons, but Shirley H., who's married to Virgil, you know who she is. Uh, Many of you know she had a stroke four years ago, and unfortunately, Shirley fell over a little over a month ago and it ended up, it took some time to realize it, but she broke several rig, ribs and punctured a lung. So it was pretty serious. And uh, after much careful consideration, the Virgil and the family have decided that uh, hospice care is the best thing for Shirley to keep her comfortable as she approaches death. And Virgil, as always, is at her side 24 seven with help from their daughters and of course from hospice. Uh, But so no phone calls at this time, but I know they would appreciate your prayers as well as perhaps a note in the mail and their address is in the directory. So prayers for Shirley and for Virgil and their daughters and everyone who cares about Shirley. My great niece, Piper, we have held her in prayer before. She did get to go home on Thursday in time to celebrate her fifth birthday, which is this week, which was this week. And Piper is undergoing chemotherapy for cancer, which was diagnosed just about five weeks ago. So she's in the early stages of that. But she had to be rushed to the emergency room last Saturday evening because of a high fever and then they discovered that her white blood cell count was very low so it took all week until thursday for her to build that back up with lots of help from the physician so uh, prayers of thanksgiving for that but also uh, invite your prayers for piper and her family Uh, if you would like to send them a note I made the suggestion a month ago, but if you would like to send them a note and do not have the family's address, just reach out to me by text or email and I would be happy, or phone, and I would be happy to give you their address. So in this uh, strange season of Advent, Advent and leading up to the holidays can be a difficult time in any year, but especially this year, we are invited to sow joy Uh, But we also know that can be difficult in this kind of a time, uh, let alone the holidays, but also um, as the nation and the world face the pandemic and the economic um, uncertainty that is accompanying that. So prayers as this nation uh, this week had 3,000 deaths in one day, which was unfortunately a tragic record. Uh, So we continue to hold our nation and uh, all people around the world in our prayers around the pandemic. We also give thanks that these hoped for vaccines are being rolled out and we all uh, hope and pray that that vision of Psalm 126 speaks of when the Lord 
restored the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dream. And verse 5, those who sow in tears shall reap with shouts of joy. Let us pray together. Merciful God, you do hold us all in your arms. In difficult days, in joyful days, we turn to you, knowing that in all things you support and sustain each of us and all of us together. As we lift before you people like Shirley, who are close to the transition to the next life, for little Piper, for people we hold in our hearts right now, we give thanks for the church and for families that reach out to one another to support each other in the difficult times. We pray for Shirley and Piper and the folks we name in our hearts for healing, hope, and renewal. And merciful God, the song of Mary talks about the rich being turned away, the poor being fed, because you long for justice for the whole world. You long for us to treat each other with respect and hope and love. Be with each of us as we try to do that, especially this Advent and Christmas season, seeking ways to serve you, to reach out to those we may not know uh, or who are strangers to lead to greater understanding. We pray for the world and scientists and physicians and healthcare workers and frontline workers in the grocery stores and mopping the floors in hospitals that all of us together can have concern for the common good and work towards a time when the pandemic days are past and we too shout with joy for uh, a new way of being together in person that is not new, but feels new. And now we pray a prayer of our own hearts about our lives or the life of someone we love or even a stranger across the world. And our loving and merciful God, we now pray as Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now the beautiful hymn, uh, A Little Town of Bethlehem, will sing uh, several verses and the words will appear on your screen. Let us sing together. <laughs>
Let us join now in the closing sentences of affirmation. Great Creator, we are in awe of you. We will never know how you managed to dream up mountains and valleys, freckles, dimples, and curly hair. A cool morning mist, the change of seasons, or the magic of music. Your greatness is beyond our reckoning, and because we are in awe of you, we believe we must follow Mary's lead and allow our souls to sing. We believe that the appropriate reaction to your goodness is complete gratitude, which looks like love for our neighbor, justice for the poor, food for the hungry, and joy that overflows. And even though we do not always believe in ourselves, we believe that our song is pleasing to you. We believe. Help our unbelief. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Beloveds, hear the promise of Psalm 126, verse 5. Those who sow in tears shall reap with shouts of joy. And hear these words of rejoicing from Mary's song in the Gospel according to Luke. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. This holy Advent week of joy, may you experience God's love holding you close. Emmanuel, God, is truly with us as we face days and nights that hold both promise and pain. May the blessing of God, Christ, and Spirit be with you now and evermore. Amen.